I, I thanks for the uh, SAPA organizer to give us, us the chance to present one of our uh, current ongoing project called the Automate, Automatic Structure Refinement Platform for Neutron Powder Diffraction. So uh, in our project, uh, we have, uh, including me, we have four uh, team members. Uh, Jue Liu is the INSMA scientist at NOMAD, a beamline in an Oak Ridge National Lab. And uh, he is basically, he is the, uh, the brain uh, about how to do data analysis. And uh, Yuan Peng is one of the instrument scientists too, but he also very good at scientific computing. Uh, Peter and I are uh, software developers in the application engineering, so we are in charge of to uh, build the software. So um, maybe it's, I gave you some background about the, uh, the work we are doing. Um, we work at the Spallation Neutron Source at Oak Ridge National Lab. Um, in 1994, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Braunhaus and Shell uh, for their uh, pioneering contribution to the development of neutron scattering techniques for studies of condensed matter. So basically, people can use neutron to uh, detect, uh, to show the, the, where the atoms are in the crystal by uh, diffraction. This is elastic. Uh, um, diffraction such that uh, the neutron will be deflected by the nuclei. And also, some uh, neutron energy will be lost by assimilated by the, the lattice or the material you study. We call it um, elastic scattering. And usually, you can use detect where the, you find out how much energy loss and map to the vibration or like the phonon mode of the detector. So basically, they can uh, tell what the atom do. So um, pow neutron powder diffraction is one of the uh, major application of um, neutron scattering. Um, it by uh, when the sorry, when the neutron beam uh, was um, hit the sample, it can be diffracted, and uh, you can see uh, goes to a lot of uh, rings, and those rings are uh, called the black peaks. And uh, by those by the those bright peaks is uh, you can tell that the distance between atomic plane in the um, in the atom in the material you study. So you can study uh, crystals, you can study uh, liquid and amorphous materials, or some even larger scale structures. And it, uh, if you know that X-ray diffraction, uh, they are, looks a little bit similar, but um, neutron is a, they, they scattered by the nuclei and the electron, and the electron scattering is op, uh, occur at the X-ray diffraction. So neutron has its own advantages, like for detected light atoms, even presence of the heavy atoms. For example, uh, hydrogen or lithium, especially in these days, uh, the lithium battery is in um, very in, in very hot, and all the people want to study like the the material for this lithium battery, how it looks, what's the structure like looks like. And then um, after uh, you have the the data being reduced, you can see uh, the upper one is you can see a lot of peaks. Those are uh, uh, different. Uh, black diffractions, and uh, there is a technique called a retrieval refinement that can be used to, to uh, determine the structure of the uh, material you study, including what its lattice parameter are and uh, uh, you know, what kind of uh, atom in the, uh, and also the atom position in the, uh, the, um, in the material. On the other hand, if you do uh, pair the Fourier transform, you, you can transform to the, the real space, and uh, all the peaks here actually is the uh, correlation between any two atoms in, for example, this is like around like a five angstroms, and, uh, and this is called a paired, distrib paired distribution function, and uh, you can use PDF refinement to uh, modeling the material. So um, where I'm, we are working at is, called, is at the Spallation Neutron Source in the uh, Oak Ridge National Lab. Uh, it is composed, 
It is composed by a, a very large, you can see this is a um, accelerator. It's about like, I forgot, it's one mile long or one kilometer long. It can accelerate the, um, and this is also a acceler part of accelerator. So basically it can accelerate protons or to like 99% of the light speed. And then it will hit a mercury target and bombard the neutron out. So when all the neutrons coming out from this guide, maybe from this bad better, a, this is basically a, a, uh, a diagram for the SNS beam room. So when the neutron starting from here bombard out, and these are all the guides to guide the neutron coming out, and then at each uh, end, at the end of the guide, is the sample. So the sample, neutron hit the sample and will be um, detected by the detectors, neutron detectors. So that's why I come about the, uh, our concept as the neutron um, SNS uh, data life cycle. So the detector will um, collect the signals for uh, each neutron event being uh, found. For example, uh, in the raw data, mostly is a one event was found at detector pixel 2094 at a time, so a certain time, which is the resolution is 100 nanosecond. And then ADARA is the data equation system. ADARA is the data equation system. It just uh, stream the uh, neutron events on the network. And uh, eventually the data archiving, when one experiment is done, for example, uh, after can range from like five minutes to overnight. All the data were put into a data format called the Event Nexus. So this is, uh, these are very uh, standard for all the beam line. Then the next thing is that you, for no scientist can use any of those kind of data to do their research or visualize. So uh, data reduction basically is to, um, to do a lot of conversions and uh, calculations and corrections to the raw data and uh, result in the data format that uh, the scientists can use to visualize or to do data analysis. Uh, for example, like these uh, BRAC data or PDF data are for neutron scattering. And then uh, for, uh, for single crystal, they, they want to like uh, the, uh, they use like a UV matrix a calculation to find the integrated peak intensity with the uh, uh, HKL unit, and then in elastic, they want something else. So uh, reduction is very uh, heavy job. Afterwards, there were um, usually there are two steps: is the data analysis and the visualization. Analysis most time they use the uh, community sponsored the software, and then uh, the scientific, you know. The user will have the scientific understanding and either you will continue experiment and, or you will have the publication eventually. So um, while I was postdoc, like the dream of the professors is they could uh, push a button at this side and uh, 12 hours later, the publication will be out and uh, all this will be automatic. That's a dream, of course. So uh, currently, uh, for the uh, powder data reduction uh, and analysis, this is the current workflow. So when the data has come out, there will be a service to do the reduction. And then uh, people can, one, do rudimentary data uh, analysis, like uh, do pattern matching or single peak fitting. Or the other, you can do structural refinement, is what I say about uh, like a Ritveld or PDF. Those are very uh, cumbersome uh, analysis um, I will introduce later. And the experiment, uh, when they see the result, they will um, interact with the uh, EPIC system. This is basically the experiment control. So um, one run, these days, uh, scientists like to do these in situ experiment. Uh, for example, like a carbon dioxide capture or energy uh, storage rich material, and uh, Jue, this is experiment by Jue, and uh, actually he got like uh, 2,000 data patterns in like 2,000 minutes, which is really not large. But he, 
He is an expert on read file refinement, but it still took him three months to analyze those data. So basically, this is posted the biggest bottleneck is uh, uh, the neutron uh, is not always um, available to users. For a user come here, usually they have like one week of the experiment time. And then if they want to do experiment again, they need to uh, submit a proposal and uh, there's a lot of chance they could not get the proposal, you know, uh, com compete without the, the competition. So they may need to like wait a year or two for the, their next experiment. This is really a big bottleneck for research. And it also then basically this expose and challenge for our data, uh, our application engineering group is that we should uh, to develop some software to so address this issue and to uh, get to the bottleneck, uh, say, see, can address the, the attack the bottleneck. So uh, that why uh, that's how we uh, propose a um, the software called automated uh, structure refinement platform. You know, basically, for like the live data, uh, data reduction. Um, pattern matching, uh, structure refinement, we try to automate the workflow such that one, uh, the neutron is generated and uh, published on the, the network. We will have a service to um, capture the neutron from the live streaming, the neutron streaming, and uh, by users, um, users uh, setup, it will like reduce the data on the, fl uh, on the fly. And then we'll feed it to this um, automated data analysis tool. And then for the, so such that the user, they don't need to do anything. They will visual, they but, but visualize the result of the experiment. And uh, one, one experiment done, like in two hours, they already know what the result is. And they could uh, be motivated to set up for the next result. So, uh, and then uh, this project we uh, started uh, from next, from last uh, October. So part of it's done and a part of it we are still um, in development. So here is, I, I want to uh, say, uh, focus more on our experience, uh, how we design and implement such kind of uh, data uh, workflow uh, platform. First, uh, this we uh, we identify this is a um, software engineering project, so we need to um, make the, the best practice on it. And so uh, first, uh, we use a TDD uh, strategy, and uh, we put on um, you know create a repository, put put on CI/CD uh, on the core lab in the lab in OIL. And then uh, for the system design, we, found, we found that the best way is to design it as the server and the client mode, such that um, any data uh, analysis or visualization can be developed a, a, or wrap as a service, such that uh, yeah, whenever um, scientists have new requirement for the new data um, analysis, tool that we can quickly wrap it as a service and subscribe to uh, hook up to our system. And then the, this is also a data-driven platform uh, because like every uh, event-driven, so every time a new uh, data set was uh, reduced on the fly, it's triggered a workflow. And since this is a, uh, a research project, for example, automated, automated uh, read belt or PDF refinement it is uh, um, actually, this is a big question mark because in 20 years, nobody ever uh, do anything to address this uh, carbon um, human, uh, in, say it's highly human intensity involved uh, data analysis procedure. In 20 years, no one can solve that problem, but we are going to try to attack it. So. That's why we use the event conquer such that um, in one way we develop the whole um, the platform and uh, develop the data list that we it's uh, rather pretty easy to solve. And then we will focus more on the uh, difficult part. So uh, this is basically it's the workflow and then you can see the workflow control is at the in the middle and uh, all these 
service can be easily uh, connected to it. And for service, uh, uh, we identify there are three types. Uh, uh, and uh, we basically, we have a, for the object-oriented design, we, we have a server service uh, base class, and then eventually we inherit it from several levels, all the way from the uh, data, from data reduction, these are analysis, and then these are for visualization. And then for each server, uh, our goal is such that it can uh, support, support like multiple beam, like multiple this kind of application at the same time. So uh, we will, it will contain what the several classes, object instance, Worker instance. Each worker basically is the real uh, entity class instance that do the data analysis or do the reduction. So here uh, is the um, hierarchy of the worker. So the worker will have like a for reduction, um, presentation, and analysis. So like a level reduction, we basically will use Mantid as the uh, the uh, scientific library. And then uh, analysis we all used like uh, GSAS2 or DiffPy CMI. They are all community supported uh, data analysis tool that has the exposed to Python. And then for the, re for the visualization, right now we uh, implement as a Qt GUI um, application. Uh, we use M MVP, the model presenter view design pattern. And we found that the best way is to uh, let this part, like the uh, the worker and the more data model, uh, such class is inherit both side. Such by this way, we can quickly uh, to design the implement the uh, the GUI quickly because we have very uh, limited uh, resources and uh, everything should be quick. So uh, this is basically is the workflow control. It is uh, like a like if you know uh, distribute the distribution computation is like a, this is more like a message queue. So uh, it is contain a lot of clients that subscribe to the uh, to the uh, data analysis or presentation services, and then whenever there are some result coming from the clients. It will go to the, a, uh, the task manager. It will, uh, with the user setup, it will convert like the uh, one task result to the task for the next one. For example, uh, when you do, uh, you, when you did the uh, see a, a new data set was reduced, it will generate three different new tasks for pick fitting, uh, pattern matching, or retrieval refinement, and send to all the service to do the data analysis, and when analysis is done, it will send back to the workflow control. And then the workflow control will generate new tasks for a presentation. So basically, this is a prototype of our, uh, our uh, application. You can see these two, uh, this is a nomad data. It has six banks. So this is, I think, a bank one, and this is bank three. They, uh, they have uh, different diffraction patterns. And this is for the um, pattern matching. Uh, it's already collected, sorry. Collected maybe around like five or six uh, data sets and you can clearly see there is a um, phase transition over there. So um, this is basically uh, just reiterate like how the, uh, our data reduction, live data re reduction looks like. That they, they, there will be SNS uh, reduction daemon on the server. So uh, it will uh, basically after, yeah, the data, is, like, the data is reduced, it will go save to our archive, and then I will kick off our uh, work, the workflow. And then this is some result of uh, peak fitting. You can clearly see the phase transition is here. This is a pattern matching, and uh, we use uh, some machine learning algorithm, uh, so it can, after they calculate the distance of two patterns, and uh, you will see there are um, the change of the cluster values and uh, indicate a phase transition. So uh, in development, uh, we are working on the automated structural refinement. Um, this is actually is a high dimensional um, 
optimization problem, and uh, some, some scientists uh, put it, think about a heuristic way, only optimize several parameters at a time, and then gradually make it uh, constrained. So this is a highly uh, human inter uh, active problem, and you uh, requires a lot of expertise and experience and knowledge. And that's the, uh, a lot of people need uh, months to learn how to use it. So uh, we, how we want to address it, we eventually found there is two, two problems need to address. One is to, uh, what is the next set of parameters to refine or whether the current optimization is good enough or not. And the third, actually, the third, third one is, is time to finalize, let's say, the refinement is done. So, um, so far, we just did, uh, completed the system design of this, uh, we call the structure refinement board. Is uh, basically, we, what I want to emphasize is that we will track all the refinement history such that the history will dump into a database and for future machine learning. Uh, it will just uh, gather the, this kind of machine learning, the, the, the training data. And then uh, it will have two interfaces, uh, you know, flexibly. One is for standalone um, GUI application. Another, eventually, it will hook to the ASRP service. So what is the future work? First, we will finish the, uh, the structure refine bot. And then uh, start to work on the machine learning model. And eventually, when everything is done, we will hook to, to another pro, to, uh, big project in the lab. One is called NDIP, is one called Intersect. So what it is for is NDIP is a uh, data, uh, neutron data interpretation platform. It will eventually handle all the data management, data movement, and the Intersect will uh, have the access to the experiment control system. So if what our if ultimate goal is to when we have the analysis result done, we are sent to some, we have there, there, this is still like in the cloud, like some decision maker algorithm boosted by AI, sent to connect to the intersect, and then eventually to, uh, for the experiment, uh, automatically to continue the experiment. Yeah, so basically that's, this is my uh, talk today, and uh, thanks very much. For your listening. Uh, yeah, so if anyone has questions, they can type it in the Slack channel. Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, could you uh, tell us a bit more about like when you were making your servers, uh, your services and workers and that type of architecture? Uh, could you elaborate on which components you had to build in-house versus which ones had like open source packages that you could leverage? Uh, can you say, uh, uh, sorry. Could you tell more, uh, like you showed the high-level architecture diagram. Could you talk about like which of those components you had to build in-house like from scratch versus which ones you, there were like existing packages that you could use? Uh, actually, uh, everything right now, they are all, uh, we start from scratch. And uh, b because, like the, I said, the NDA tip is the big one, the platform. Uh, it is, uh, we are, um, they, they are going to use like a Galaxy. Do you know this workflow engine called a Galaxy? They are going to uh, modify Galaxy, improve Galaxy. So my one is a by light source, uh, lightweight, try to do a like a prototype, but, but we found out it's very helpful. So yeah, everything is from scratch. And uh, right now is uh, the lab policy is kind of closed sourced. Uh, it's in, inside the, uh, the lab called the Git, code, Git lab. But eventually we hope it can be, uh, you know, released out as open source. And for the, uh, if you are interested for like uh, for peak peak fitting, actually uh, we develop a uh, a package called uh, Mantid. This is an open source international collaborated uh, open source project, and it has a very good uh, peak fitting algorithm. It can automatically uh, uh, guess the um, the peak width, peak height, and background. 
and because we used to, to, to address like automatic peak fitting for millions of peaks. And it also supports a uh, different type of peaks, peak shape. Uh, another question, when you talked about the, the bottleneck in the uh, processing time, uh, that I, I believe that is for future like date, like for example, you ran an experiment and then you're just processing that. Do you have, uh, do you support operations like backfilling in your infrastructure? Like when you refine your model for, um, uh, when you when you refine, you showed this slide where you have this optimization and you can refine this uh, refinement. When you have a better refinement uh, model, do you backfill all of the ex previous uh, experiments that you did? Oh yes, uh, definitely. Uh the uh, I we pr we assume that the system can backward to all the previous reduce uh, previous experiment uh, we can uh, have the previous uh, data uh, put into the system but we just use a different uh, different data reduction service to reduce the data but otherwise it's exactly the same. Got it. Thank you. Are there any more questions in the room? Okay, with that, uh, let's give a round of applause for Wondua. Thank you.